Yo, what is good, dev guys? Welcome back. So in the last video, we got this for loop going to go ahead and iterate all over all the actors in the level and find our battery spawner base classes. Um, what we want to do now is let's just move this up. This needs to actually happen before we set our game state to playing. Uh, we need to already have these. Uh, we need to already have this array filled with the actor, the spawn spawner actors inside of the level, so that we can talk to them properly. So what we need to do is go to our header file, and I'm gonna close that. And we need to create a private function that will handle the logic that we take in when we switch our states. So let's just call this void handle new state and this is going to take in a e game state new state and let's go ahead and implement it generate an implementation and what we're going to do in here is switch and if we go switch and we go ahead and pass in new state here uh, in Rider, we have the benefit of pressing Alt Enter over the new state. Uh, actually, over the switch statement. I'm sorry. If this will work. Okay, so Alt Enter is not working. So just right click over it and show context actions. Oh, okay. I see the problem. The problem is I didn't press Enter to plug that actual variable in so it was still waiting on me to type a variable so alt enter on this and we can generate missing case statements so this will set up all of our case statements for our enum which saves us from having to type i do i do not like how they organize it but at least i don't have to type it i just go in here and format it the way that i think it should look and all of these will just break and default will do nothing. So depending on what state we're in, we'll do some different logic here. So if we're playing, we want to get all of the spawner actors that we filled inside of our array here. And we want to go through and set that function to true. We want to set that is spawner active function to true. So this simple enough. That's just a simple for loop. So we go for and we want to do for each loop. Uh, this is just make it easier for us. Um, so I want to do for each spawner in our active spawners and level. If I could type correctly, active spawners and level. I want to go through let me get rid of this space here. I want to go through those and say spawner at set spawn set spawner active and set that value to true. Now this is saying that we basically didn't include our um we didn't include our battery spawner class up at the top, but I believe that it did as soon as I converted that dot to a dot operator. So you need to go ahead and include your spawners slash battery spawner base dot H file. And that should get rid of any errors you may be seeing. And I want to go ahead and copy this because when we won, we want to do the same thing here. We want to go ahead and yeah. We want to set the spawner active, but we want to set it to false here. We want to deactivate the spawner. And I'm going to copy this one more time because when we lose, we want to go ahead and deactivate the spawner. Then we want to do a couple other things. We want to uh, disable player input. And we want to go ahead and ragdoll our player character. So to disable player input, we need to get a reference to a player controller. So let's just create a, a player controller pointer right here. And since all player controllers have this functionality, we don't need to cast it to our player controller. 
will just call it on a player controller and it should work on our player controller. So let's just call this PC and set it equal to U Gameplay Statics. And this is Git Player Controller. Some very helpful functions inside of U Gameplay Statics. So we want to say we want to say the world that this actor is in, and we want to pass it the zero index for the first controller. And then we want to make sure we go ahead and do a null pointer check. So just in case anything happens here, we want to go ahead and save ourselves from crashing the game. So if not PC return, but if we do have a player controller, we want to go PC dot set cinematic mode. And this takes in a few parameters. We want to bool set cinematic mode to true. We want to affect the movement. We want to affect the turning as well. So what this will do is set our player controller to cinematic mode. And we want to go ahead and toggle off the movement and toggle off the turning. So let's go ahead, call that function and just set all of these to true. And actually, this might be false because we don't want this cinematic mode to affect movement. Uh, but we'll, if it's if it's the opposite, we'll just come back in here and change it. Um, so that is pretty much it for our disabling the player input. So for ragdoll in our character, we need to get a reference to a character. So let's go ahead and get a character pointer. And this is uh, uh, my character. And this is equal to another U gameplay statics function that we can use. And it's just going to get the player character, which is convenient enough. We want to pass in this world and we want to pass in the zero index for the first player in the world. And we want to also do a null pointer check here. If if we might have fallen out of the world or something like that, or our player got destroyed somehow, we just don't want to crash the game. So it costs nothing to do a null pointer check, by the way. It's always it's always good to do them. That's why I set up a, a live template for this if return or if uh, if not something return so if not my player character or not my character return but if we do have my character we want to go ahead and call my character but we need to get the mesh that we want to set this <laughs> that we want to set the simulate physics to true on so get the mesh and then uh, set simulate physics and here we want to pass in true and we also want to do one other thing we want to get the character's movement component okay that's what it is b can jump there we go so my character and we get the movement component on the character then we get the movement state and we want to set the b can jump on that movement state to false um this will go ahead and do everything that we need to do ragdoll our character stop us from inputting uh, and only way to make sure is to go ahead and run the editor and i've already realized that i forgot to call this function so if you're smarter than me you you, you realize that as well so this function needs to get called whenever we set our current state uh, so inside of here, once we set our current game state to the new state, we need to go ahead and handle that new state and let's pass in our current game state. So that should work for us. I'm going to build first just to see if things move a little faster. Okay. So this error is weird. It's basically saying I have to put these type of things inside of a block here. So. Um, let's just see if this will do it here. And 
put one here maybe. And then that way we could add our code here. And I will go ahead and build that and see if that was the issue. Okay, so that was the issue. I did not know that inside of a switch statement, you have to put variable declarations inside of a block. I thought as long as it was in between the case and the break, that it will run. And I was wrong. Learn something new every day. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play in the editor. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a test. See if we get a ragdoll here. Oh yeah, we're going down. We're going down by one here. Um, so let me go back to my blueprint uh, class that has my game mode. And let's go ahead and decrease or increase that amount of power that we decay by. So let's go back to 35. I am going to test here. And I'm going to let my dude go down as far as we can here. And let's see if we ragdoll here. Okay, we ragdoll and we fall through the world. And if we go to our character, um, I believe it's the same issue. So it's in third person CPP, third person character, open up this full blueprint editor. If we go to our mesh and we go down to the collision section, which is here, we can look at our collision presets and we can see that it's set to query only. So if we go ahead and set this to custom, we could alter these ourselves. So I want it to, to, um, collision and if we set this to collision enabled and i honestly think we could set this to um could we set this to yeah let's try to set this to physics only and i'm gonna compile and let's go ahead and see if when we set simulate physics and i'm i'm actually decreased by a lot here maybe like 80 just to get that moving a little bit faster. Let's uh, see if we actually collide with the world with physics enabled. Okay, there we go. Nice. Okay, we got a nice death animation there. We can't uh, jump. We can't move. We can't physically move our character, but we're able to move our camera. So. Let's go back to that code where we set our cinematic mode here. And I think we want to set, let's look at this real quick. Control, if we go control shift space, we can see effects movement. Uh, I actually want to do this second, this one down here at the bottom where it will hide the player. Well, no, nah, we're good, we're good. So let's just try to set these to true and see if we uh, end up moving here. So I'm gonna go back into the editor, compile this, hopefully it doesn't take two days. Okay, and let's uh, die out here. Okay, now we can't move or turn. So we do have to set those both to true. All right, so in the next video, we will go ahead and polish this as much as we can and wrap up this series. And if you guys are ready for that, go ahead and join me in the next video where we get started on that. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.